Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to record this. It's just started. It's lovely to see all your names here. I'm excited that, that you're uh, here joining us. Um, uh, welcome to the Department of Bioengineering Master's Conversational Webinar. Uh, so I'm hoping this is um, a relaxing, informative time to get you ready to um, attend our program. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. Well, first off, we'll do an agenda. So tell you a little bit about our department. I want to introduce you to our graduate advisors, uh, our student services, um, talk a bit about the uh, heavy, high emphasis we play on co-op, um, talk about some of your points of contact um, and some student life things like our student council. And then we'll get into some of the different degree requirements and pathways that you can complete a master's degree in bioengineering, follow up with a couple of important key dates, and then open it up for questions. Uh, although if you have a question at any time, uh, feel free to put it right in the chat and we can pause and answer that question. Um, that would be welcome. Okay, so hi. <laughs> um, I think I need to update my official portrait as I have hair in that photo and it's... Um, mostly gone now. Uh, anyways, that was me when I was a couple years younger. I'm Mike Yeagley. I'm an associate teaching professor here and associate chair for master's education and global operation. Um, and then uh, with us as well as Caroline Pridmore, who's our academic operations manager, uh, a wonderful point of contact for program queries, guidance on what course to take or when, milestones and many other things. Hi, Caroline. You want, you want to say something? Say hi, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I very much um, and a, am a good um, support. Um, you'll spend a lot of time um, talking to your graduate advisor in terms of planning, but if you ever have a question or, or need um, support kind of navigating the program, I know sometimes it can feel like you're shuffling around different offices to get an answer to questions. So um, if in doubt, please feel free uh, to reach out. Great, thank you. Um, the chair of our department is Professor Lee Makowski. Um, and then Esther Cohen is our business manager. Um, she's a very useful contact for funding or financial issues, um, as well as overseeing the assignment of our teaching assistants and grading positions, um, many of which, you know, students fulfill those roles. Uh, we have Catherine Lassiter, uh, and they are our lab operations and safety manager. Um, you can contact them for any uh, card access questions or lab access or safety related issues might have in any of our laboratories on campus. Yeah, so and just um, a note in terms of um, contact with Esther and Catherine, and um, that might be towards the, the kind of end, end stage of your program. As we go through this um, webinar, you'll hear about um, kind of research opportunities. Um, and so as you kind of get started with, with those, um, they, they'll be kind of points of contact for you. And similarly, if you're interested in greater positions, um, those are um, better for, you know, as you're kind of into your program, have got some coursework under your belt. Um, but yeah, and so I'll just let you know when you'll um, be contacting them. Yeah, not primary. And we have our graduate advisors. Uh, with us today is Marie East. We also have Russell Westorp as an advisor. Uh, Marie, would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, graduate advising? Sure. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, Russell and I are currently the uh, graduate advisors uh, for um, the BioWeek program. Uh, it will we'll both be working with you. We work as a team. Um, so you may see his name, you see my name, but we both, the team is where we kind of work together with all of the students. Um, what we basically would help with if you're having any, you know, registration errors, as the screen says, and just anything in general in terms of if you need to figure out, you know, why you can't get into a class, you know, we can figure out what the issue is in terms of restrictions. Um, if you happen to be on academic probation, which we, we're going to hope you, you won't be, but, you know, we would guide you through that process uh, along with uh, with Mike to be make sure that you're taking the correct classes to, you know, steer you away from that. Any general questions you might have, and whenever you're going to email, please make sure that you do use your annual ID uh, and any other information uh, be as detailed as possible, because I feel like rather than having to ask the questions back and forth, back and forth, from the 
beginning. Ask the questions, we can answer it, and then we can move to the next step. So that's basically what we would do for you. So, and always use the Bi-Week Grad Advising email um, because that basically, if, if I'm out, Russell can answer. If Russell's out, then I can answer you. Or we do have other teammates uh, that specialize in other teams, but if we're not available, they can also help you as well. So, but thank you for being here today. Yeah, um, and this table that you can um, see on the screen, this is on the Graduate Student Services website and is a really handy um, tool to kind of know who to go to for what, um, because I said it can, you know, there's, there's um, questions that arise across your program um, and yeah, um, please use the, the website to help you with that, um, but definitely when you're having registration errors, um, all kind of um, general questions about um, your degree audit, things like that. The your graduate advisor um, is the best point of contact. If you have um, questions about like your master's thesis or project or um, kind of advice for a career path or specific courses that you might want to take for your area of interest, um, you can definitely reach out to myself or Professor Yigley. Um, and just uh, I know we'll talk about um, this more in a moment, um, but anything to do with um, visas, OGS, the Office of Global Services, um, they are the best and only people that can help you. Um, obviously, it's a very important um, thing to make sure is done correctly. So please reach out to your OGS advisor. All right, thank you. Um, also, um, major focus of our entire university is co-op, and we are, uh, not to brag too much, but rank number one in this uh, area in U.S. News and World Report. Um, you know, the wonderful thing about co-op is the um, real hands-on work experience that you can get added to your CV or resume. Um, uh, really can't, you can't, I can't state enough how um, important that is to our graduates in their um, future careers, getting that next job. Uh, and so to assist you in uh, the co-op placement and uh, to ensure your success in your co-op uh, position, we have two co-op coordinators, Max Setterer and Allie Joyce. Um, they will teach a cooperative education course that will help you with things like resume building and interview skills. Um, they're also going to provide you with one-on-one -on -one career advising. Um, and these folks also, they develop relationships with a lot of our employers. And uh, those relationships lead to the employers um, posting co-op positions that our students can then apply for and um, work on. Um, so uh, look out for this email for the intent to co-op email. That's an important one that you don't want to miss. Um, you'll be assigned a co-op advisor. And from there, the co-op advisor is going to guide you through uh, taking the co-op course, uh, the semester prior to when you go on co-op and uh, ensure your success there. And they're lovely folks, um, extremely helpful in uh, that uh, transition from your studies into your co-op. Um, so I can't recommend them enough. Um, uh, the one-on-one -on -one career advising is also uh, extraordinarily helpful for our students. Well, that and Max, you know, I know Max pretty well. He's just a fun guy to talk to. So <laughs> um, here are some of the employers um, that we have relationships and connections with. Um, uh, we have on close to 3,000 total co-op hires last year, uh, and that's from 2,200 different employers. Um, there is not a better city in the United States to do a bioengineering type co-op than Boston. Perhaps maybe San Francisco, but that is a, a, a bit of a flight. Um, so we're blessed with just a, a multitude of really top-notch world-class companies uh, less than five miles away from us here throughout the city of Boston and Cambridge. And so we have 180 co-op employers in this area, as well as a very large network of 38 co-op coordinators. So the local businesses in Boston are well aware of our program and its effectiveness. So uh, we are really happy with the way that this prepares our students for their careers. Um, you can just see some of the corporations that hire us here on the right. All right, here, I won't just read through all of these um, 
bullet points, but we will distribute this slide deck to you in case you would like to refer to it after this presentation is done. Um, if you have any visa or I-20 related queries, the OGS is your point of contact there. Uh, we have a global student success office that can be quite helpful for any international student issues you might have. Um, and that information is on this slide. Caroline, would you like to add anything to this one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this slide is just, um, it, it's a very small snapshot of the resources available to students um, at Northeastern. Um, there is, is an office for most things um, to, to support you through your academic journey. Um, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of, of navigation on the website or reaching out to, um, to one of us to, um, for advice on where to go. Um, but certainly, as a, you know, if you are an international student, the Office of Global Services, um, what I didn't mention before is they also offer um, academic skills advising for international students and other kind of student engagement opportunities um, where you can connect with, um, with specialists on the international student experience. Um, and, um, you know, get the career um, design employer engagement um, uh, office is also an extremely valuable resource to help you um, as you, um, you know, look towards the end of your program and, and next steps. Can I hey. chime in on the OGS? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, just because we do work with OGS on certain cases where we have any compliance situations, it's just important that uh, if you have any sort of question, <laughs> any question about uh, whether you have enough credits or you know, semester hours, just any question you have, if you're not sure, it's always important to contact OGS because you never want to have it be a problem that, oh, I know I have a problem and then it's too late and then your record, you know, something has happened with your visa status. So just be very, um, any question you have, just be sure to contact OGS and, you know, they have walk-in hours. You can definitely go to them. Uh, email, it's a busy season right now, but it's just important to be very open and communicate because you never want to get to the point of where you land out to say that, you know, something is wrong with your visa status. You always want to be ahead of the game and make sure that everything, all your ducks are kind of in a row. And the advising team will definitely, we can help you to a certain point, but when it comes to visa compliance and stuff like that, OGS is definitely the best person to communicate with. Because I'm just speaking from experience just when I say that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Marie. That's absolutely okay. a really important point. And I mean, I think in general, you know, open communication is a really important part of making sure that, you know, you have, um, you know, you're on the right path. And so if you ever have a question, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, we have all, the, all these key people in in key places um, to support you. That's what we're here for. So don't, um, don't be afraid afraid to reach out if you ever have any questions. Um, so I'll also take this opportunity to talk about our Graduate Student Council. So on communication and people in, in place to support you, um, we are extremely proud of our um, Graduate Student Council. Um, and the um, the effort that they put in to um, make sure that student voice is is heard and uplifted um, and creating um, really wonderful community events. Um, when you uh, join the program, you will be invited to join the graduate student Slack, which is a, just a great way to informally connect um, with your uh, fellow master students and the PhD students as well. Um, the masters and PhD students do collaborate on the graduate student council. Um, so there will be um, events for kind of the students from separate programs, but also together. Together. Um, there is a dedicated master's um, representative on the student council every year um, who will be reaching out to you um, at the, the beginning of the fall semester. Um, we have social events. Um, so um, there's a photo um, at the top here. This is um, a, a, a cultural event we had um, where we ordered um, Iranian food. We had music. There was dancing at lunchtime. It was um, just a really wonderful um, event. Um, we have an annual research symposium, um, which the department and the student um, uh, council collaborated really closely on, which was a wonderful um, event. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of uh, community building um, events where um, yeah, throughout the year you'll have a lot of opportunity to connect with your fellow students. Um, and in addition, we do also have um, graduate student town halls, which is a great um, place for you to ask questions and provide your feedback to the department. Um, it's a really um, it, it's a really important um, thing to the department to to hear um, your voice and um, and you know your feedback. Um, we definitely partner very closely with the graduate students to make sure that our program is um, the best it can be for our students.
Okay, thank you. So here are some uh, degree requirements. The um, degree in short takes 32 credits to complete and your GPA must be uh, 3.0 or better. Um, we start off with some core courses. These are courses that we feel all of our bioengineering students need to have. <clears throat> and that is, <clears throat> pardon me, principles of bioengineering and medical physiology. Uh, medical physiology is BioE 6100 and um, is a wonderful introduction to bioengineering as a whole. There are a lot of really interesting guest lectures that come in from all different areas of bioengineering and teach um, different parts of that course uh, where you learn a lot about the broad field. Um, and because bioengineering is so broad, we do have several concentrations available for you to specialize and take a deep dive into an area that is most interesting to you. Um, and those are biomechanics, devices and bioimaging, uh, cell and tissue engineering, and then our uh, system synthetic and computational bioengineering. So we'll choose one of those four concentrations where you can um, learn uh, a lot more about a more narrower area of bioengineering and become a real expert in that area. Um, and then you have three different pathways to move through the program. So pathway one is coursework only, in which case you would take uh, 32 credits of traditional classes. Um, and then there's a coursework plus MS project. Uh, the project takes the place of a course. Um, to do a project, you'll need to, uh, if that is what you desire, you'll um, need to make a connection with one of our research professors on campus. And uh, you, what you'll do there is to do research directly for that professor as a part of their laboratory activities. Um, now we have all of our research professors listed on our website. And if you, uh, I highly recommend if you're interested in either a project or a thesis. Now, the thesis is just a, an additional uh, amount of research. It's a, more research. Um, and so if you're interested in either of those research-based pathways, then I recommend that you take a look at the research that our professors are doing online. Um, and generally you want to uh, read some of their papers and become acquainted with the work they're doing. And then it's always best to ask um, them directly if they're looking to support any master's students. And um, if they are, you can work out a, um, project and uh, some deliverables that you would complete for that professor. Um, but it is a, my strong recommendation that you familiarize yourself with the professor that you'd like to work for as research uh, for a couple of things. Number one, um, you want to make sure it's something that's interesting and valuable to you and fits your concentration and your um, goals post-graduation. Two, um, it's best to show really strong interest uh, to the professor, you know, having read their papers and, and really knowing what they're doing is a really valuable thing to do before approaching them to set up a research research project. Um, but if that is something you're interested in, the we have two different pathways, the project or the thesis um, to do those hands-on laboratory-based research activities. Um, and those would uh, take the place of some of your courses. So you wouldn't have to take as many courses. You would essentially replace courses with project or thesis work. Okay, there's BioE 6000. This is a one credit course. This is offered only in the fall semester. Uh, it's a wonderful time to learn um, to know your peers, those of you that are sort of progressing through the program together, make some friends. I can't emphasize enough how great it is to have a study group and some friends to get through some of these harder classes. Um, you know, it, it takes a village, it takes a community to, to uh, study and do your best. And really, you want to make as many connections as you can, because it's always great to just know other people in your field. Um, and this is a one credit course. All of our new master's students will enroll in this and take it in the fall. We'll have a lot of guest speakers that you'll be exposed to. The PIs are principal investigators. These are our folks who lead labs on campus. And they'll come in and they'll talk about their research. And that can be a wonderful time to get to know the research that's going on, especially if you're interested in a thesis or project. Um, you know, you could be exposed to the, the PI's research and perhaps uh, work with them through um, meeting them in principles of bioengineering. 
There'll also be some student presentations. Um, and this is primarily um, getting to do literature searches, research, um, work on your presentation skills, um, which are very, very important um, skill to have. So it's a great class. Um, you'll all take it together in the fall and it's uh, it's one credit. So it's not a heavy lift, but a very useful, useful course. Yeah. And a quick note that um, in the spring, you will see a BioE 7000 principles of bioengineering. That is the PhD version of this. Um, so the master's version um, in the fall is BioE 6000. Um, so you definitely um, should enroll in this in the fall semester. Um, and as I alluded to earlier, we also have uh, medical physiology. That's our second required course that you'll all take. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is offered in both fall and spring. Um, so the um, 6,000 is fall only, but medical physiology is both fall and spring. Um, and then we have uh, your concentration course requirements. Those vary. Uh, the courses that you take vary from concentration to concentration. Um, and those are available uh, in our um, graduate handbook or the course catalog. That's most easily accessed uh, through our website. Um, and then we also have 7390 seminar. Um, Caroline, can you tell us about that? Because my knowledge on that is perhaps not as good as it should be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, every fall and spring semester on Wednesdays, um, we hold um, departmental seminars. So um, this is a mixture of um, faculty within the department and also visiting speakers. Um, basically, it's an opportunity for all graduate students. So this is master's students, PhD students, um, our faculty, um, staff go. This is really um, the department coming together to um, share research with each other. Um, and, and it's a really great way to not only get to know your peers, but also um, really get, get to know um, what's uh, happening in the bioengineering community. Um, you do need to enroll in this at least once across your program, so it's a good idea to get that on your um, enrollment um, in your first year. Um, but even when you're not formally enrolled, um, we definitely um, encourage you to attend um, every time that there is a seminar, whenever you can make it, um, because it is a great way to um, get involved in the community and also make those connections um, with faculty if you are interested in um, doing some research. Um, you know, all these connection points are a really important way to um, make sure that, you know, you are engaging fully um, with your program. Um, and it's just um, a really enjoyable um, part of the program as well. Oh, thank you. All right, so I was alluding to the different pathways we have. Um, I could give you a little bit more information on those now. The, the coursework option is 32 semester hours, which is roughly eight courses. Most of our courses are four credits per. Um, then there, uh, that is composed of those two core courses we just talked about, plus two or three required courses for each concentration. And the remaining credits are made up from elective courses, which are drawn uh, from the list specific to your concentration, which is again available in our catalog. Uh, online is the easiest way to see that. Um, we also have the project option. Um, so in this case, you'll find a project advisor, as I was alluding to earlier, might uh, be a great place to meet them as is in a principles course that you'll take in the fall. Um, or you could do it over simple personal interactions, emails, things of that nature. Um, the project option replaces one four credit course. Um, and the deliverables for that are, well, you do the do research, right, uh, with the uh, PI. Then you write a report and submit that to the project advisor um, for approval. And then you'll have completed that uh, project option. And that will take the place of one four credit course from your uh, electives list. Then if you'd like to do a thesis, um, this is where you'll find a thesis advisor. Now, the process for finding a thesis advisor is basically identical to finding a project advisor. It's just that instead of one four-credit course, you'll do two four-credit courses uh, to make up eight total credits. Um, if necessary, if you want to continue your research past those two semesters, you can continue 
uh, by registering for the thesis continuation, uh, BioE 7996, which will allow you to continue to work on that project if you so desire. Um, instead of writing a report, you'll write a master's thesis and submit it to a thesis committee for approval, and then you'll do a thesis defense. The thesis defense is a meeting that's open to the public where your um, thesis committee will come. You'll present your research in an official um, scientific or engineering type presentation, and then um, you'll pass through your um you get your thesis approved that way. So it's uh, twice as much credit and twice as much work. Um, and then the thesis is a little bit more involved in the project in that you need committee approval for the thesis, whereas for the project, you need just uh, a single person, your advisor's approval. All right, so I hope um, you get the point that we are, uh, there are a lot of folks here to help you uh, do your best throughout the program. In all areas, we have a, a lot of faculty and a lot of staff that are dedicated to your success in your master's degree. Um, we have some quotes from some of our uh, students here, uh, some of our alumni um, who really praise things like the flexibility, the accessibility, the preparation they received in our program. And so we're hoping um, that uh, through all of our efforts, we can get you on this list someday. Um, and when you're at your uh, job, you can maybe give us a nice quote. Uh, that would be great. All right, uh, here's a orientation schedule. Um, yeah, I'll just um, jump in here. So um, orientation, um, and uh, Marie, you can add to this as well. So we do have a, um, a College of Engineering Graduate Student Services orientation um, with an in-person event on August 28th, an online event on September 1st. Um, so that is very much um, introducing you to kind of the, the wider college and university, um, you know, the community and information. And then we have a department specific master's orientation uh, with Professor Yeagley and myself on September 5th um, in the morning. Um, and so um, across those two sessions, um, that will give you everything that you need to, um, to yeah, start your program successfully. Um, Marie, anything to add on the graduate student services one? Uh, if you're going to be on campus uh, by that date, um, it's important for you to show up in person. One would be very helpful uh, because we'll do a lot of, show you a lot of things kind of in person. If you bring your laptop and everything, we can show you how to access a lot of things it would be very helpful. Um, and if you happen to not be in the country by then, of course, attempt, attending the September 1st one um, is, is fine as well. Um, just make sure that you know you have everything or you should be receiving or already received information about the orientation, like registration, and you know, we'll have a few giveaways. So giveaways. So it'd be important to uh, attend uh, the orientation because as Caroline said, we do provide a lot of useful information. There will be a Canvas course. Uh, for you to go through whatever is done in person as well as online. Uh, but it's very important to attend because you'll need to know a lot of information in terms of registering and just doing the things that, you know, are important to be a student here. Uh, but that's pretty much yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of information um, that you receive in your first, uh, you know, first uh, month on the program, first week even. Um, so it's really important just to, to make sure that you are in these sessions just so that you can kind of bookmark everything, kind of get, um, get a, you know, acclimatized, um, and then you can um, find the information you need as you need it across your program. Um, a couple of important links just to remind you of. Um, uh, from the admissions team, you should have um, uh, received some new student information and registration guidance, um, which there is a section specifically for master students, um, which gives a little bit more detail on what we um, suggest you enroll in um, in your first semester. Um, the Bioengineering Graduate Handbook, um, those of you whose um, student emails are already active um, may have received an email from me recently with um, the new handbook, um, but this basically talks you through, it's a very long document um, which has the uh, master's and PhD program information in it, um, but this is a really good um, place to find kind of, yeah, course guidance, um, links to forms, um, and it's a good, it's a good um, place to go when you have a question to check the handbook first to see if you can find 
find the answer and then um, if not you can reach out to um, to myself or your advisor um, you can find it um, on the bioengineering website um, and if you go to the community section and resources for current students um, it is in there All right, um, and we are on social media, on Instagram, um, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Um, so if you don't follow us already, please do and keep up to date with um, all of our events um, and important news. And I think we'll open the floor up now to some Q&A. Yeah, thank you, Caroline. I just saw a question in the chat that I uh, marked as answered about what kind of computer specifications are required. Uh, there's a link to current computer specifications as recommended by the College of Engineering that I posted there that'll give you a sort of a minimum and recommended uh, level of computer. I found that their recommended level is pretty high end. Um, so that would be a maximum required. And I think the minimum is, is perfectly acceptable uh, looking at their specifications for what kind of computer would be necessary. Um, I'll jump in on um, the process of switching concentrations. Um, I'm glad you found the, the webinar helpful. That is great to hear. Um, so if you are interested in switching your concentration, it is a good idea to reach out um, to your graduate advisor um, and Professor Yeagley and provide some information in terms of, um, you know, your reasonings for um, wanting to switch your concentration. Um, and they can um, help guide you. Um, you know, Professor Yeagley can talk to you about whether that sounds like it would be a good fit for you or whether your original concentration is a better fit. Um, so please reach out. Yeah, and I could just add that uh, there are some overlap between courses. So uh, switching to concentration might, uh, certain concentration switches may be easier than others based on the coursework you've already completed. And so it's it's different for every student, but I'd, I'd be happy to discuss that. A uh, typical timeline for co-op for thesis track students. Now, um, I do believe on the um, on the College of Engineering um, website, there is a timeline that you can find in the co-op section um, in terms of typical um, semesters. Um, Marie, can you speak to um, typically when thesis students take their co-ops? Um, I'd have to get back to you because I it's... Not, I don't have it come up as often, um, mm -hmm. but I'd have to research it, um, the purpose, Liam, or I'd have to, you can email us, uh, if I, I'll type in the email, and then I could get the answer and I can respond. Via Wonderful. Email. Yeah, a lot of, um, because, um, you know, different students, their, their programs kind of, you know, things happen at different stages, and some people are doing coursework only, some people doing project thesis, so things do shift a little bit depending on what you're doing, um, but that's where your co-advisor and your um, and your graduate advisor will be able to guide you through um, through that, but you do have plenty of time once you join the program, um, because obviously you need to get some coursework under your belt before you go on your co-op and take your co-op class, so there's plenty of time. Uh, okay, course registration advising. Um, so that is a good question. So um, first of all, I would um, recommending, re recommend taking a look at that new student information that was shared with you and the link will be in the in the PowerPoint shared as well. Um, there is a registration guidance section. Um, if you do still have questions, um, you can reach out to myself or the COE BioE grad advising email and we'll be happy to assist you. Uh, okay, uh, appropriate courses to register in the first full semester is a student with a concentration in medical devices and bio bioimaging. Um, that is a really good question. So um, I recommend taking a look um, at the um, master's course catalog, um, which I'll actually, I'll, um, I'll pull up because I think that might be a good thing for um, everybody to um, take a look at because that is um, the best place to go. Um, if you just bear with me. Sure. And while you're looking for that, I can answer this question about prerequisites. Um, the, for master's students, the prerequisites don't uh, transfer to your previous institution. So the only prerequisites that we have for our master's courses are those in our own program, right? So we would structure um, our courses, but there would be no a prerequisite that you would have to fulfill from your undergraduate degree or your previous institutions. Mm -hmm. um, I would just to, to add to that, um, 
I would make sure that when you are taking a class, say it's a um, particularly computational class um, and you haven't got a, a lot of computational background, that's something to consider um, because there aren't prerequisites. You want to make sure that you do have um, kind of background that aligns with an advanced graduate course. Um, so if you're not sure if you've got the right background to fit into a class, again, just reach out um, to myself, Professor Yeagley, and we'll be able to, to guide you um, to whether that, that course is good for you. Um, and you can also see um, prerequisites if you click on a class so this is the course catalog um, which um, you may have seen before it's um, linked on the program page when you look for your applications um, if you can't find it reach out we'll be happy to um, to share it um, and uh, so you can see when you click on a course there are prerequisites here and you can see it says all graduate program admission. And that means that if you are a graduate student, you can go straight in. There might be others that have um, graduate prerequisites and they'll be listed here as well. Um, so to come back to the um, biomedical devices and bioimaging, um, so you can click on um, a specific concentration and you can see the required coursework um, and then an elective course list at the bottom. So I definitely recommend starting off with one of the required courses in your first semester. So you'll want to take your one credit BioE 6000. You may want to enroll in medical physiology um, and then you can um, uh, take one of these courses um, that's offered. And similarly, if you're in another concentration, you can do the same thing. Um, again, the required coursework is a good place to start. Okay. Any other questions you might have? These are all great questions. Thank you for asking them. Absolutely. All right. Well. I don't see any, but if you do have some, feel free to reach out to advising uh, me, Caroline. Um, we'd be happy to help you uh, answer those types of questions. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and again, we will send out the slide deck for your review. Um, for some of those uh, tables of information might want to check again. And of course, our website is a um, really great source of information, both for the research that our um, principal investigators are doing and also for any sort of curricular questions. If you look on the catalog, a lot of those um, can be answered there. And me talking generated another question here. Um, should we enroll for any labs for biomedical imaging? Um, there is not a lab class for biomedical imaging. Again, if you use the course catalog um, or the graduate handbook as a guide for what classes to take, um, you can see what the requirements are. Um, for biomedical imaging, there, there are some of the required courses and some of the elective courses that are a little bit more hands-on and practical. Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't believe that there is specifically a lab course um, for biomedical imaging. Um, whereas the cell and tissue concentration has more, um, more options for lab-based classes. Um, there's also a, a lab class in the system synthetic computational bioengineering um, concentration. Um, but as Professor Yeagley said, there are some overlaps between electives. So if you are interested in lab experience, um, definitely take a look at what other courses um, there are. And we can, um, if you're interested, and it's not on the course catalog for your concentration, um, we can discuss if it may be appropriate for you to take and maybe petition to count. All right, thank you. Could not have said it better myself. All right, well, thank you everyone for being here. Again, I do appreciate you um, joining us and I hope this information was helpful to you and I hope to see you in person uh, on campus uh, soon. All right, I think we're done then. Thank you so thank much. Thank you everyone. Yep. Thank you everybody. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye. Bye all.